October 29, 2025, a date already carved into the nervous system of every observatory on Earth, at exactly 7,047 a.m. Eastern, the interstellar wanderer known as 3I Itlas reached its perihelion the moment it passed closest to the Sun. Astronomers had prepared for months, counting down to the instant the object would reveal its true nature. Yet when the hour arrived, the world saw nothing. The telescopes that had tracked its every flicker suddenly went blind. For a few breathless minutes, the universe hid one of its most important secrets behind the single brightest object in the sky. The sun became a wall of fire between humanity and the unknown. Optical observatories across Hawaii, Chile, and the Canary Islands, all silenced by geometry. 3i Atlas had slipped into what astronomers call solar conjunction, aligning perfectly behind the sun from Earth's perspective. Every lens, mirror, and sensor that looked toward it was instantly flooded with daylight, so intense that even advanced filters burned out their signal. NASA's radar networks, capable of mapping distant asteroids, were useless too. Radio waves that could have bounced off 3i Atlas were scattered and drowned by the solar plasma. Even space-based probes like Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter, built to stare into the Sun, were positioned on the wrong side of the orbit. At the very moment when the object's secrets might have been laid bare, the cosmos conspired to blind us. But something happened in that blinding silence. Instruments designed for solar weather, Stereo A, Soho, and GOES-19 captured flickers where nothing should have appeared. In their frames, the black silhouette of the sun was momentarily rimmed by an impossible glow, a pulse of light that shifted toward an unnatural blue. When those frames reached Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, he froze. It wasn't supposed to brighten there. It wasn't supposed to change color that fast. And yet, for those few minutes when no human eye could see it, 3i Atlas may have done something that defies the physics we know. The world waited blind while history unfolded in the glare. We missed the moment itself, but not its echo. The data that survived, raw and imperfect, whispered the first hint that this visitor might not just be a comet passing through, but a message written in light, hiding behind the sun. When Earth's telescopes were blinded, the truth fell to the machines floating in the silence of space. Three of them, Estero A, Soho, and GOES-19, were never meant to hunt comets. They were built to study solar storms, flares, and plasma ejections, not visitors from beyond the stars. Yet on October 29th, as 3i Atlas slipped behind the sun, these instruments became humanity's only surviving witnesses. At first, the data looked routine, faint streaks of solar wind, radiation bursts, magnetic noise, but when the frames were processed and stacked, a single anomaly leapt out. 3i Atlas didn't dim as expected. It blazed. In the narrow hours before and after perihelion, its light intensity spiked by nearly 200%, a rate far too rapid for natural reflection or outgassing. Comets normally flare slowly, their volatile ices vaporizing over days as they near the sun. But this… This was instantaneous, a flash, a pulse, as if something inside the object had awakened. More disturbing was the color. The composite data from SOHO's Lasco C3 coronagraph showed a spectral shift toward the blue, not the yellowish or reddish hue typical of dust-rich comets. Blue meant energy. Blue meant ionization, possibly from metallic compounds or artificial emissions. A.B. Loeb's Harvard team described it as an unnatural photometric signature inconsistent with known cometary spectra. For a moment, 3i Atlas glowed like a machine reflecting laser light, not like a rock shedding dust. Then came the trajectory update. Orbital simulations using deep space tracking data revealed a subtle but undeniable deviation. The curve of its path didn't perfectly match gravitational predictions. It wasn't large, less than half a degree, but enough to raise eyebrows across every major observatory network. In space, that kind of precision anomaly whispers intelligence. Avi Loeb's internal report, circulated hours later, categorized the event as Level 4 on his own, 
Lobo scale, a threshold reserved for phenomena strongly suggestive of artificial origin. His words were careful, almost surgical. The object exhibited behavior inconsistent with natural thermodynamic expansion. The blue shifted emission and rapid photometric change imply an active mechanism rather than passive heating. While mainstream astrophysicists dismissed it as optical illusion or instrumental saturation, the numbers refused to fade. For the first time since Oumuamua, the possibility returned that we might not be watching a comet at all, but technology, something ancient, something alive, something that just blinked in the face of the sun. Once the first data from space-based telescopes reached Harvard, Abby Loeb's team began compiling what he called the Improbability Index, a list of anomalies so statistically unlikely that, when seen together, they seem to argue against randomness itself. He identified eight distinct characteristics that, in his words, strain the limits of what a natural comet could be. Each one could be dismissed on its own, but together they form a pattern that demands attention. 3i Atlas travels along a trajectory almost perfectly aligned with the ecliptic, the flat plane on which Earth and most planets orbit. Random interstellar visitors enter from tilted angles, the probability of one aligning within zero. 2% of this plane is microscopic. To Loeb, it's as if the object chose the path of least resistance, the exact orbital lane where probes, signals, and planetary relays are easiest to access. Images from July and August showed a single jet of material pointing directly toward the sun, not away from it as every textbook dictates. Normal comets vent gases that the solar wind pushes backward. Yet 3i at last expelled something that defied that push, maintaining a sun-facing plume, almost as if it were stabilizing itself against solar radiation pressure. Its nucleus exceeds 5 kilometers in diameter and carries a mass of roughly 33 billion tons colossal, even by comet standards. For comparison, that's nearly a hundred times the length of SpaceX's Starship. A body that large, moving at interstellar velocity, 68 kilometers, holds kinetic energy rivaling the detonation of millions of nuclear bombs. It brushed near Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, yet avoided Earth by tens of millions of kilometers, as if following a deliberate corridor through the solar system. No gravitational reason explains such a clean miss. Spectroscopy revealed gas rich in nickel but poor in iron, a ratio found in refined alloys but rare in primitive cosmic dust. The presence of high nickel to cyanide levels only deepened the mystery. Metals processed, not raw. Every comet bleeds water vapor as it heats. 3i Atlas, however, contained less than 4% water by mass, far drier than any comparable object. It seemed built, not born. In polarized light, its reflection plunged into extreme negative polarization, stronger than any comet ever measured, an optical trait sometimes seen on smooth metallic surfaces. Its inbound trajectory traced within 9 degrees of the famous 1977 WOW signal, the unexplained radio burst once suspected to be artificial, a coincidence, possibly. But when Loeb calculated the odds of all eight features occurring in a single body, the number dropped below 1 in 10 quadrillion. For him, this wasn't proof of alien design, but an invitation to look deeper. The universe, he suggested had just dealt us eight impossible cards in one hand. The moment R.V. Loeb's analysis hit the internet, the response from the broader scientific community was immediate and cautious. The excitement around 3i Adlers was undeniable, but astronomers who had spent their careers studying comets warned against letting wonder eclipse method. They argued that extraordinary claims require extraordinary data and, so far, that data hadn't been fully vetted. Veteran comet researcher Dr. Jessica Agarwal from the Max Planck Institute was among the first to speak. Every feature Loeb lists, she said, has been seen before, just not all at once. She reminded audiences that geometry and sunlight can play cruel tricks on instruments. A plume that appears to jet toward the sun might in fact be a rotating vent on a lumpy surface, 
its orientation only seeming reversed from our vantage point. Several comets, including C1999-S4 Linear and 67P churyumov gerasimenko had shown similar illusions when observed under certain lighting angles. Then came the issue of color. While the blue tint had caught headlines, experts noted that coronagraph cameras are optimized for solar wavelengths, not for precise spectral readings of dust and gas. What looked like a shift toward the blue could just as easily be an artifact of sensor calibration or background subtraction errors. Without peer-reviewed corrections, even dramatic hues can mislead. Radar and spectroscopy specialists also weighed in. The claim of nickel-rich iron-poor gas ratios might result from how solar radiation ionizes elements differently depending on their volatility. Nickel, being more stable at high temperatures, can dominate spectra near perihelion while iron vaporizes into wavelengths those cameras can't detect. In other words, chemistry, not conspiracy. As for the perfect alignment, along the ecliptic, planetary dynamicists reminded the public that gravitational shepherding naturally funnels many interstellar objects toward that same plane. The solar system acts like a vast, flat river, and foreign bodies entering its gravity well often settle temporarily into its current. Statistically improbable, perhaps, but far from impossible, the, well, signal. Coincidence also failed to impress most researchers. The region of sky around Sagittarius is enormous, spanning billions of potential trajectories. You can throw a dart at random, one SETI scientist said, and still land within a few degrees of something interesting. Their message was simple but vital. An anomaly is not evidence of intelligence. Until 3i Atlas re-emerges and data can be independently confirmed, speculation is premature. For now, the safer narrative remains grounded in physics, solar heating, sublimation, angular illusion, and instrument limits. Yet even as they defended natural explanations, some scientists admitted quietly, the timing, the geometry, and the hints of energy still make 3i Atlas the strangest visitor we've ever recorded. And behind that caution, curiosity burns brighter than skepticism. Now, with its blinding passage behind the sun complete, the world is preparing for the return of 3i Atlas. By mid-November 2025, it will rise once more into the evening sky, cutting a slow, glacial arc through Virgo and Leo. For the first time in weeks, Earth will again have eyes on it, clear, direct, unfiltered by solar glare. Every major observatory on the planet is already primed for what comes next. The watch begins. The Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope are cued to capture ultra-high resolution spectra and thermal images, capable of distinguishing whether its brightness changes are chemical, mechanical, or artificial. At the same time, a network of radio telescopes, from Arecibo's successors to smaller amateur arrays, will listen for narrowband transmissions or patterned bursts, signals that nature rarely makes. These are the so-called techno-signatures, the fingerprints of engineering across interstellar space. Meanwhile, NASA's planetary radar groups at Goldstone and the Deep Space Network are waiting for the geometry to shift. On December 19th, the object will make its minimum approach at roughly 269 million kilometers, still distant, but close enough that a radar ping might, just barely, return an echo. If it does, even a faint reflection could map its shape, spin, and surface texture, revealing whether we're dealing with rock, ice, or alloy. Government agencies and research institutions are also wrestling with a different question, how much to show the public. Lawmakers like Representative Anna Paulina Luna have already pressed NASA for the immediate release of any high-resolution pre-perihelion imagery, arguing that transparency is crucial in an era where secrecy fuels speculation. For now, those images remain sealed, reportedly awaiting calibration review. This coming window will decide everything. If 3i at last behaves like a normal comet, fragmenting, fading, and losing mass as it retreats, then the mystery closes and physics reclaims its order. But if it brightens again, if its trajectory shifts unnaturally, 
or if even a faint radio whisper cuts through the static, then humanity will face a moment unlike any before. Within weeks, we'll know whether three eye Aplers is just frozen debris from another sun, or a machine older than our civilization, awakened briefly in the glare of our star. One outcome returns us to comfort, the other rewrites what it means to be alone. Every era has its mirror, a moment when humanity glimpses something that reflects its own smallness back at it. For our generation, that mirror is 3 i Iplas. Whether it turns out to be a natural body or an engineered artifact, the implications ripple far beyond astronomy. This is not just a question of composition or trajectory, it's a question of cosmic context, of whether we are still the lonely architects of our own story or merely the newest witnesses in a civilization far older and wider than our imagination. If 3 i Atlas is natural, then it's already extraordinary. It would mark the third known interstellar visitor after Oumuamua and Borisov, each stranger than the last. Together, they suggest that our galaxy may be littered with fragments from other star systems, time capsules of alien chemistry, carrying molecular signatures from suns long extinguished. That alone expands our sense of belonging. We are part of a cosmic ecosystem, exchanging material across light years. Studying 3i Atlas could teach us what other worlds are made of, and by extension, what we might have been made of too. But if it is not natural, if the blue glow, the perfect trajectory, and the improbable chemistry are the fingerprints of design, then everything we know about life in the universe changes overnight. It would mean that we are not the first to build, to travel, or to explore. It would mean someone, somewhere, once possessed the power to send machines between the stars, and perhaps still does. The idea that 3i Atlas might be a dormant probe drifting through the ages until our sun's heat reactivated it, is no longer confined to science fiction. It's whispered in labs and observatories with genuine unease. For centuries, humanity has looked up and seen silence. No signals, no visitors, just the faint hum of our own transmissions bouncing back at us. But what if silence was never emptiness? What if it was observation? 3 i Atlas forces us to confront that possibility that the universe may have been watching us long before we learned to watch it. Governments will debate, scientists will analyze, and skeptics will roll their eyes. But the deeper truth is psychological, even spiritual. In studying 30i Atlas, we are studying our own fear of insignificance, our hunger for connection, and our suspicion that we are part of something much larger. With a comet or craft, it reminds us that the frontier is not out there, it's in the limits of what we allow ourselves to believe. The sky is not silent, it's speaking. The question is whether we're ready to listen,